Hi, and welcome to Run and Tell That. The show where we give you the word so you can spread it. I'm Anthony. I'm Davinia. And I'm Mikhail. Now, if you're in need of an early morning wake-up call, then look no further than today's guest. He's one of the UK's longest-standing radio presenters and is described as part of the cheeky duo on Choice Breakfast. It's radio DJ and presenter Martin J. Welcome, Martin. Thank you for joining Thank us. You. Are you Thank cheeky? I am part of the cheeky duo, so uh, <laughs> the, I, I guess I'm a little bit cheeky, but I'm the less cheeky one out of the two of us. Okay. The public's perception of a DJ is that you attend parties, you get to meet loads of celebrities, and that your life is very glamorous. How would you describe it? Um, I wouldn't describe it as glamorous for a start, um, but there is a good balance there. Mm -hmm. um, we do get to attend some parties. You do get to meet a lot of celebrities with mm -hmm. um, interviews and so on and so forth. But there's also the, the unglamorous side, which is getting up at four o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, being up late hours of the night as well. Mm -hmm. You know, luckily it's radio, so, you know, I can just throw on anything and <laughs> jump in the car and go down the road. But, you know, there is a less glamorous side to it than what people imagine. Mm. I'm always in the club shaking a leg. What kind of parties do you attend? Mm. Um, I, I, I attend a variety of parties, but not that often. I mean, obviously, as a DJ, I play in parties. But when I get the chance to actually go out, I tend to do other stuff other than parties. I like restaurants, um, going to the theatre, just something that's slightly different away from, from the music industry. But if you're going to go to a party, you've got to go to a slamming party. <laughs> yeah. Are you a radio DJ or um, a, D, um, a, pre a radio presenter? Because sometimes I do get confused. It's funny, my boss asked me the same question. <laughs> I'm very worried. Um, I'm, a, I'm both. I started off as a DJ, a yeah, disc cool. jockey, playing in clubs, mm -hmm. what some people call a street DJ. Um, Part of that, an element of that was brought onto the radio. Yeah. Um, my show on a Sunday yeah. is very much me being a DJ, playing music that I've chosen to play. Mm -hmm. And then my job on a Monday to Friday doing a breakfast show is solely as a presenter. Um, we need no DJ skills whatsoever. You just mm -hmm. need to be able to present. So I do have a mixture of two, but that's based on the two different shows that I do. Oh, that's good, that's good. So you became a DJ from a young age and you started to buy records at the age of 13. That's so young. How did you manage to afford this? Afford the records? The records, yeah. You know, in those days, um, pocket money. It, it, was, it was about <laughs> pocket money. It was about, you know, knowing that there was a record that I wanted to buy. Yeah. Waiting until it maybe take me two or three weeks worth of pocket money to get it. But the moment that I had enough money, I would forego lunches, although it doesn't look like it. Um, <laughs> you know, I, w I would do whatever I had to do. Then I, when I got to about 15 or 16, mm -hmm. I started doing part-time jobs. And when I realised that music was a big passion of mine, I had like three part-time jobs on the go. I was, wow. My mum used to say, you're almost earning as much as me, boy. Hey. <laughs> Taking some rent off you. <laughs> uh, but that's how I got involved in it, and that passion just continue to grow and grow and grow and once you know you're doing something you'll find the means to get it done. Mm. I know you started out on Pioneer and then moved to West London Radio and now you're on Choice FM. Mm. Come on this must have been tough. How did you manage this? Getting on Choice was um, it, it was a really really difficult experience because mm -hmm this new station had started and it was black music mm. and you can imagine the amount of DJs that wanted to go on there. Uh. Where there was a niche in the market where there was no soca DJs on there. And so whilst everyone had applauded me on my voice at the time, um, I hadn't decided what direction I wanted to go into. And I thought, well, you know, if there's a gap in that market, even if it's not where I want to go, let me start there and work my way through. Um, within about a year of doing the Soka show, I had grown in love with the, the culture of the Caribbean. <laughs> the passion had grown 20-fold. Um, and so I started to embrace what I was doing yeah. in a very, very big way. Mm. Um, and that, that was my ease into the Choice FM. Three years later, I got given the Saturday morning breakfast show. Again, I wanted to do something different. Mm -hmm. So I started working with youngsters. We had the Saturday school. Um, and then in 1997, it just went <laughs> And my boss said, I'm going to try you out on a breakfast show. Oh, you know, and 13 and a half years later, I'm still getting up in the early hours of the morning and doing a breakfast show. So it wasn't planned, but I did. I just knew that I had to get one, my foot in the door somehow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I did. 
Speaking of your breakfast show, um, you, the topics that you have are very comic, um, such as one of the recent ones, Who's the Baby Daddy, with your co-presenter, Lucy Ambash. <laughs> <laughs> How do you manage to come up with the material? Because some of them are quite mad. Life. Um, you know, people always say to me, what are your working hours? There are no working hours, you know. Mm. You, you mm. try and take everything that you do and use it for radio. Mm. For instance, I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of days I was talking about having makeup done and how I dislike <laughs> it <laughs> to the max. And the fact yeah. that, you know, Michelle Williams is from Destiny's Child is with me at the moment, mm -hmm. who's been through that on a number of occasions, it will be a topical conversation. So with anything that you do in, in life, you know, um, I could be on a train at seven o'clock in the evening. Mm. I write that down. Coming up to Luton today, there was a guy singing to his daughter. I wanted to commit a crime. <laughs> um, you know, it's just general little things yeah. like that. You see them, they happen. You put them down on your phone, you email yourself. Mm. And then in the morning you go, look, we can talk about this. We can talk about that. And some of your ideas, you just enhance into something bigger like Lucy's, who's the baby daddy, which I'm not, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> so um, also you have another show called uh, The Caribbean Affair on a Sunday night, which you've been known to host from the Caribbean during carnival season. Um, having a job that enables you to travel must be fantastic. Absolutely excellent. The Caribbean Affair is my baby. Yeah. Uh -huh. Been doing it for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I've been able to do live broadcasts from Barbados, from Trinidad, from Jamaica, uh -huh. from Bahamas. So, yes, I've, it, it's been absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not always the glamour that you that you hear. Yeah. You know, when we were broadcasting in the Bahamas, everyone's going, oh, you're in the Bahamas. It was one o'clock in the morning when we were doing a breakfast show. Mm. They had decided that it would be a good idea to put the outside broadcast unit mm. on the beach. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to the Caribbean at one o'clock in the morning. It's not the warmest place. Isn't it? And we were there, my, you, I couldn't even put my foot in the sand. It was that cold. Oh, it was wow. a really uncomfortable experience. And then you've got to turn that round and make listeners think, that you're in the sunshine, <laughs> and this is where they want to be. Um, but, you know, like I said, you take the rough with the smooth, mm. and I have been very, very fortunate to be able to travel to all of them. Oh, thank you. So, um, also, you do a lot of community work, which um, you've been doing, been doing some work with the African Caribbean Leukemia Trust. Would you like to tell us a bit more about that charity? The African Caribbean Leukemia Trust, um, whilst I was on air, Daniel mm. DeGale, um, found out that he had a, a serious illness. Mm -hmm. And his mum, Beverly, and his stepfather, Owen Lewis, um, set on a, a mission to find him a donor. Wow. Um, and on that mission, um, they realised very, very early on that there were too few people of ethnic minority background that would donate blood mm -hmm. or be on a, on a register. Um, very, very often you say to someone, would you give blood? No, nah, boy, I mean, I ain't doing that. Um, so the chances of Daniel finding a match mm. was very, very slim. And Beverly and Orin went about raising money and raising awareness in such a humongous way. Mm. I mean, not that they put Daniel to the side, but uh -huh. you kind of forgot that Daniel was ill. Yeah. The way that they were doing things, the people that they were working for, um, they're just two people that I admire very, very much indeed, to a hero level. Um, and they're still doing their work now. Um, it's just an amazing charity. They lost Daniel two years ago mm. in October. I was at the funeral. Um, ACLT is just one of those charities that whenever I think about it or whenever I talk about it, I get very emotional, um, uh -huh. but they're doing a lot of hard work and I would urge everybody just to check them out on their website, aclt.org.uk, and see the work that they're doing and see how necessary it is for, for us people of colour mm. to, to be on the register and give someone a fighting chance. Okay. Thank you for being with us today. You can listen to Martin in Action weekday mornings on Choice Breakfast from 6 till 10 a.m. and on Sunday with the Caribbean Affair from 9 till 11 p.m. on Choice FM 107.1. Next week we'll be joined by the gorgeous Alicia Dixon. From us, goodbye. Now go run and tell that. Bye. Bye.